Well, uh, it's now the second Sunday of Lent, and um, the the gospel that's always read on the second Sunday of Lent is that of the Transfiguration. And the liturgy of the church in the preface for the second Sunday always talks about how Christ, in order to prepare them for his coming death, wanted to uh, reassure them of his glory and show them uh, a glimpse of his glory and his divinity. And this was meant to strengthen them for the trials that were shortly ahead as they're making Jesus' final journey uh, to Jerusalem. And so uh, this is the kind of reason that is always on the second Sunday of Lent that we read a version of the Transfiguration. But I think for us, pastorally, it's also good for us. In, in Lent, we also, I think, try to look to and embrace and accept that in our life, there are um, trials, there are crosses, there are difficulties. Sometimes in, in Lent, particularly, we focus on some of these difficult aspects of life. And to see here today that there's a kind of a pattern of our life, and Paul describes it in the second chapter of the Corinthians, if I'm uh, sorry, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, I think it's verse 10. And Paul says that we are always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Christ, so that also his rising or his his life, his risen life, may be manifested in us. So again, here's the here's the pattern. Always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Christ, so that also his rising to new life might be also manifest in us. And so this is the pattern, see, of our life. The picture in an old spiritual, we're climbing Jacob's ladder, and every round goes higher, higher, soldiers of the cross, is that uh, we come around to the cross, and then hopefully we pray, you know, we come around to some of the fruits of that cross, to a kind of a sense of joy and new life, because the cross is a fruit-bearing tree. And we come back around to the cross, but it's a spiral staircase, and so every round goes higher and higher, every round, as we make our, our journey uh, back home to the Lord. So there, there is here a kind of a pattern, and I'd, I'd like to look at this just journey going up the mountain and experiencing this and coming back down the mountain. There's another picture, if you will, of that journey. So again, let's start then with this picture of, of the cross, and then the productiveness of the cross, and then finally the pattern of the cross, all right? So we'll look at the, this gospel with those three kind of divisions in mind. Now, the first thing we'll just look at is this picture uh, of the cross. You'll notice it says, we, we sometimes overlook this entirely, as far as any commentary, it says that Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them up a high mountain. Um, it says took them or brought them, but obviously all of them had to climb. And that's the part we often forget. You know, if you go to the Holy Land today, you go, to, you go up Mount Tabor, the traditional uh, site, even though it's not named in the scripture, uh, this is the traditional site. It's about a 1900 foot mountain um, and the beautiful valley below. But today you get these, get in these fancy like micro buses and they take you up this winding road and it's like, you know, terrifying. And, you know, it's like, but, you know, I mean, it's nothing like what they had to go through, you know, I mean, going up this on foot and uh, up, up this high mountain, you see. And um, boy, though, they get up there and there's a beautiful view. But let's not miss that Peter, James, and John, with Jesus, they climb a high mountain. And this is a picture, if you will, of, of trials. This is a picture of the cross. It's hard climbing this mountain, 1,900 feet up. Probably on the back side, it's a little, you know, the, the rough side or the back side of the mountain. Uh, but nevertheless, they're going up a very steep climb. Probably took them the better part of a day. And it, it indicates in the gospel that they fell asleep when they got to the top. Not Jesus, but Peter, John, and James uh, fell, fell asleep, which they had a kind of a propensity to do. <laughs> Go, so fast forward to the garden. But anyway, uh, now, of course, I never fall asleep. You know, I'm always awake. <laughs> I'm lying, of course. But you see, there is this... Um, it was obviously a difficult climb, and that's the part I want to say. Look, this this climb is difficult, but it's going somewhere. It's not just a miserable climb, for, you know, that has no meaning, that has no end in sight. It's not. They're going to a glorious place at the top, and there's we could say there's two aspects to the glory. If you've ever been to Mount Tabor, and I hope you have, but I've been up there about four or five times, and uh, I can tell you that. Um, 
Um, most of the times I've been there, the weather's been good, and I could see the beautiful Jezreel Valley below. Oh my gosh, what a glorious, glorious vision of this valley, the, the Valley of Megiddo, the Valley of Armageddon, or sometimes called Jezreel Valley. And it is green, it's beautiful. I mean, it's been in the in the uh, wet time of the year, it's a beautiful scene. It's like being up in an airplane. And it's a, just a wonderful, wonderful view. And just that view is it's like, wow, that's got to be worth the climb. And so there they are. But something even greater, the glory of the Lord is shown. We'll get to that in a minute. But you see, in order to enjoy this vision of the Lord's glory, and also this beautiful vision of the creation, uh, they do have to climb. But it pays off. Now, in our life, we often undertake crosses. Uh, some of them just come to us. Um, crosses of suffering, loss, grief, maybe financial difficulties, crosses of aging, health. Okay. But there are some crosses that we intentionally take up because we know that they will bear fruit. You know? and so, I mean, I just think of simple things uh, like uh, a lot of people go to college and they, they work real hard to get a degree, you know, uh, they have to write papers, pass tests, spend a lot of money and time, read a lot of books. And all of this is to get some letters after your name. <laughs> get a piece of paper, you know, I got my I got my degrees hanging on the wall here and they're all written in Latin. You know, and yeah, I can read the Latin. But again, all of that is just a way of saying people spend a lot of time and money to get these, you know, degrees because they, they see that it will pay off. It it it'll open doors, you know. You see the idea. Or again, so many of you who listen, I'm sure you've raised children, or maybe you're in the process of that, or you will one day, soon enough, raise children. Um, and again, raise them right, and they'll turn to bless you, but it's hard work. It's hard, hard work. Or again, uh, someone who learns to play a musical instrument, you know? It's a wonderful thing, a wonderful gift, and once you've mastered it, it can be a source of great joy. But learning to play that instrument that's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of practice. Or again, maybe one final example would just be the whole idea of uh, an athlete, you know. And uh, they're, they're either just going for their own personal best, or maybe they're, a, they're an athlete who's good enough that they could actually, you know, win some renown and fame, even to go to the Olympics. And so they get up every day, they try hard, they train, they pummel their body. And why? Because they know that this inflicting, if you will, or taking up a cross intentionally will, will give good, good things to them. It'll open doors. It'll make, put them in better shape. It'll help them learn or read a, uh, play an instrument, or you get the idea. Okay, so there is this climb in life, right? And um, so we're going now to the second point, and uh, it, it's, it's where we move from, you know, if you will, the picture of the cross to the productiveness. I've really already introduced it. Uh, the, the idea of the productiveness of the cross, that the cross is really a tree of life. If we're faithful, even our most painful crosses can bring us new life, can um, put sins to death, bring us humility. There's a lot of fruit that can come uh, from the cross. And um, there's something about this that we know instinctively, even if at times we resist it. So again, uh, we see there's a productiveness. Now, St. Paul puts it this way. In the same place that I read you earlier, he says again, 2 Corinthians 4 and 10, he says, we're not discouraged. I'm sorry. Um, he, goes, he starts by saying, oh, we are always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Christ so that also the rising or the new life of Christ might be manifest in us. And he goes on to say, therefore, we're not discouraged. You see, these momentary afflictions are producing for us a weight of eternal glory beyond all comparison. So in other words, sufferings, crosses, produce glory. Now the devil wants you to be discouraged. He wants me to be discouraged. You know, ah, look at you, see your suffering. That's, you know, he's not, you know, the, you know life, life is terrible. Look, just tell the devil, I'm not discouraged. I'm encouraged because it's producing. Whatever I'm going through is producing. If I'm faithful, you see. And uh, so, and notice again, he says, it's producing a weight of glory far out of comparison to the suffering. In other words, a little suffering produces a lot of glory, a lot of leverage there. And so again, even a little suffering brings great glory. How much more so for those who have suffered greatly? 
You know, I know some people in my life who've suffered, and, and I, I say, well, it seems so out of proportion. Why do they suffer so much more than other people, including me? But I tell you this much, if they're faithful, I'll have to get an appointment to meet them in heaven. They'll be close to the throne, close up there near the martyrs, you know. And um, I think of my sister, Mary Ann. She was very, very sick with mental illness, and uh, eventually she died from it. And uh, But I think someday I'll have to get an appointment to meet her in heaven because she loved the Lord, but um, she was sorely afflicted by uh, schizophrenia. And um, so I think, again, you know, uh, to, to put her suffering in perspective, her suffering, which is much greater than what I've ever suffered, produce for her a weight of glory, way out of comparison. Don't necessarily look down at all on people who suffer or are poor or who are suffering. Um, look up to them. Encourage them to stay faithful. Jesus says many who are last are going to be first in the kingdom. And why did you say many, not all? Because faith is the component. We should summon them to faith. Look up to them. You know, call them our friends. Take care of them because they can speak for us on our, uh, you know, our behalf for us before the Lord. So... As a, uh, a bishop once put it that I knew, he said that in this world, the poor need us, but in the next world, especially at the judgment seat, we're going to need them. We're going to need their testimony. We're going to need them to cry out, Lord, be good to this one. He was good to us, you know, and they have, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The poor, the suffering are close to God, and they are going to be more than rewarded. See, okay. So don't be afraid of your own sufferings, and don't be utterly despairing of the sufferings of others. There is a productiveness to it. So here you go then up on the mountaintop, and like, wow, they have this vision. All the climbing is paid off, and wow, what a payoff. They see not only the glory of the Jezreel Valley. Come on. Okay, fine. They see the glory of the risen Lord, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ in all of his glory. They hear the Father's voice. Peter doesn't know what to do. He just says, let's pitch three tents and just stay here forever. You know? It says he didn't know what he was saying, you know, but... I mean, it's, it's overwhelming the glory they encountered and experienced. Oh, wow, you know? And uh, so it, it's all paying off, all that climbing they did. And so this is the pattern, the number two in that pattern. We, we talk about the picture of the cross or trials. We talk then, though, about the productiveness of them, okay? Now, as I say, Peter wants to stay up there. And the Lord, in effect, says to him, no, Peter, no, not yet, not yet. We still we got to go down this mountain. We've got to go down through some dark valleys, and up another mountain called Calvary. And just over that mountain is the heavenly Jerusalem in all of its glory. But Peter, the pattern of life, you see. So we go now from the picture of sufferings in the cross to the productiveness of the pattern of the cross and trials, and finally now to the pattern. Our life has this pattern. I've already introduced it. Let's just repeat it. Paul says we are always caring about in our bodies the dying of Christ so that also the rising to new life might be manifest in us. And so it's like that spiral staircase. We come to the cross. Hmm. Tough times or difficulties. We come back around <gasps> the resurrection. Hmm. And then back to the cross again. And yet, we're not back just at the same place. It's not just an endless cycle. It's a productive cycle. Because every round goes higher, higher. Every time you come back around to the cross, you're one level higher than you were before. And that's the beautiful vision of the old spiritual Jacob's Ladder, seeing it as a spiral staircase, not just as a lean-to ladder. And you have then this beautiful picture of life, which it's meant to give us hope. You know, we are not living in paradise. We're living in paradise lost. God offered paradise, but we decided we wanted some kind of a better deal. We could do something better. Well, welcome to the better deal. Paradise lost. And so there's going to be sufferings and difficulties. And the Lord himself didn't exempt himself from it, see. Uh, so he, he came and took up that pattern for us and turned his sufferings into glory and therefore turned our sufferings into glory. St. Paul says in Romans 6, Are you not aware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? And by baptism we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father, we too might rise with him to walk in newness of life. And this is the pattern of our life, the Paschal mystery. It is the suffering, death, 
resurrection, and ascension of Christ. That is the pattern of our life. So, just in a quick nutshell, that's the story of the Transfiguration. It is something that was meant to prepare these apostles for the coming difficulties, that they wouldn't lose heart. But for us, it's also an announcement of the pattern, you know, the pattern of our life. Quick question for you, did it work? In other words, did these apostles manfully make it to the cross? Well, I saw his glory, I'm not worried. He's some One of them did, John, the apostle. He was there that day on Transfiguration Mountain. He was there. And he was able to persevere and go all the way to the cross with Christ. Peter and James kind of bailed out. All right. So, one third, it's not, not zero. <laughs> he got through to one. One of them was prepared. But for us, we want to, again, take heed. When you're going through stuff, we're all going through stuff. Don't be too discouraged. You know, suffering is going to be miserable because that's the nature of suffering. Don't like it, but um, don't be too discouraged. You know, God will bring fruit from this climb up that mountain, uh, coming up on the rough side of the mountain. See, and I'm trying my best, uh, you know, to to make it in. You know, I, or again, we we see the. Um, Another, my soul looks back and wonders how I got over. You know, we have these climbs, but they have a purpose and a productiveness. And it's the pattern of our life until we get home. One day we'll come to our final, our final hill as well, our Calvary. And uh, we'll die there. But over that hill is the heavenly Jerusalem with all of its glory. So for now, we may feel like, Peter, I want to just stay up on this year. Uh, Peter, come with me. we got to go. Not this hill, but another, but another. And we will get there. But we will get there not to stay there. If we're faithful, we get there, and we rise to glory with Christ. So today, this picture, the cross is a fruit-bearing tree. We're always caring about in our bodies, the dying of Christ, so that also the rising to new life of Christ might be manifest in us. And so we're not discouraged. For this suffering, this momentary suffering and affliction is producing for us a weight of glory beyond all of comparison. Amen.